This is Tuna on Toast. Good morning. Good morning, Ted. Tuna Did... on Toast, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, it has nothing to do with sandwiches. I just, I love the TV show Seinfeld and terrible things happened whenever they order tuna on toast. I hope my <laughs> life goes a little bit better than that. <laughs> also a huge fan of Seinfeld. So yeah, uh, and uh, watched a lot of it, especially with my kids when they were growing up. It was like, you know, it was, yeah, we one of those evening things if I'm home off the road, like Seinfeld was on at a certain time and yeah. It just makes you feel better if you're, even if you're in a crappy mood, you get five minutes of it, even if you've seen each episode seven times and you feel yeah, better. Yeah, they don't get old, really. No, there's, uh, there's some greats there, definitely. Wow, there he is, the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Dave Gahan, Soul Savers. It's your third album together, collaborating. You've reimagined 12 songs. I, you've probably been asked this a million times, but I don't know the answer. Why did you go with these particular tracks and these 12 artists dave mm. well you know the short version of that is uh, to answer is that these artists and singers um vocalists um and uh writers sometimes bands sometimes you know solo musicians but um they all have in some way shape or form kind of informed and carried me through uh, lots of different times in my life, good and bad. And, you know, um, but they, they're they very, it's very consistently there. Their voices um, continue to kind of inform me somehow of like where I am or what I'm doing or, you know, music does that for me, you know, songs do that for me, um, much in the same way film does as well, I guess, movies and stuff, you know. When you go into reimagine a song and it's the it's your take on this song that you're putting out, do you feel anything inside like nervous stomach ache that the actual artists, if they're still with us, is going to look at you like, what is this dude doing here? Why, why is he doing this? Yeah, I do. Because, you know, I would I would do the same thing. I mean, I've heard some really great versions of, of sort of songs from my band and uh um, and some really ones that I'd care to not listen to again. Um, but, you know, it's it's always a challenge, actually. I think it's much more of a challenge to, uh, for an artist to, um, m to make it your own, you know, to make it feel though uh, the song is coming from somewhere deep in your own heart. You know, that's, that's the real key. And I think if you do that, um, it will, it, it, it will be, um hopefully liked <laughs> um as you say by the original whether they're with us here or not still um you know i guess like some you know we, i got some feedback from immediately i mean lanagan for instance you know i mean he heard Mark the track that we that we did the evening that we did it um and he was in his words moved to tears because you know and 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 um you know, you know, I hope I don't embarrass Mark saying that, but, um, you know, that that in, indeed made me feel uh, feel very good about the, what we were doing with the song. He also told me something interesting that um, he felt he understood the song better now. And I, I thought that was really interesting because oh. as a writer myself, it's sometimes it's years later that you kind of might be on stage performing a song that you wrote five years ago or something. And um, you kind of have a little click moment go, Oh, right. You, you get kind of informed, maybe something that's going on between you and the band or the, the audience, uh, you know, fans, you know, something, something going on in your life at that time where you're like, that's what I was kind of mumbling about. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's got to feel some sort of, uh, not that Dave Kahn needs validation, but that, wow, what we were doing in the Shangri-La studios in Malibu, not too far from where I am, it was freaking good work. I have questions on how, like, I want to nerd out for a minute on how these songs came together. So it's you and Rich. And you're Rich there. Machen, who is really the facilitator of soul savers you know and, and what that that collective group of musicians becomes in any given time but the majority of these musicians i have 
and I think Rich has as well, I've worked with for the last 10 years on, as, as you say, this is the third record that we've done together. So there's a certain amount of chemistry definitely that comes together between us. And this was the first time that we were all in the studio actually together at the same time, tracking these songs in live performances. Um, we, you know, uh, each one being, each one kind of, we completed a day, a, a track a day. So we'd work the track up to where we wanted it to be. And usually by the early evening, sometimes late evening, we'd be, uh, we'd be saying, right, we're ready to go. We can like, like, let's start taping some of these. So when you did Angels and Ghosts, the second album, you were never in the same room? Um, I was sometimes. I was with, uh, you know, with the singers, with, with TJ, Wendy and Janet um, in New York, but, um, and Rich sometimes, but, but no, we, we pass <laughs> stuff back and forth and there is, you know, sometimes on Rich's side, there may be three or four of them together in, in a room um, but mostly, uh, no, no, this was the first time uh, that so we cool, that we're all, it was really cool to do it. And for me, it was something like, um, I don't know, I, I wanted to have that experience of how, I mean, you can't transfer sometimes what you do on stage live. Um, uh, it, it's virtually impossible to do, but that's, you know, that's trying to get that on a, uh, on a record. Um, and that energy and that, that kind of atmosphere and that chemistry between vulnerability too, as well, between musicians. Um, um, I find that it, it's, there's something about it that still gives me goosebumps, you know? But Dave, even in my super duper tiny small bubble, if I have a task I need to do in a day that is creative related. Yeah. Sometimes one hour in, I throw in the towel. I'm like, I can't do this today. I stink. I don't know what's going on. The coffee didn't go down right. If you're going in there all day and you've got all these musicians and then you yeah. got the guy rich there and then you're trying to figure out these melodies, did it go smooth every day? You know, I got to say it did. Um, we maybe had a couple of days where there was like some sticky moments a little bit where we, you know, but look, I, I personally, and I know Rich did as well, before we went to Shangri-La, for the three, three or four weeks that we were there. When, I spent, when, when like, was I, that, by the way? It was in November of um, 2019. Um, oh, okay. And then we mixed, we mixed in London in January and um, with Marta Segloni, who was fantastic. And then the whole world went to shit. <laughs> it was like after, <laughs> shortly after that. Um, but um, I, do a, I do a lot of pre production work like I spent months actually you know kind of studying these songs and singing them in my studio in New York I, I set up a PA system where I could sing live and perform these songs so I so I made a track list of about 20 songs and I would perform these songs you know every every couple of days um, like I was rehearsing so by the time I got to the studio I was no longer hearing the original versions i kind of had my i knew what i wanted to do wow that is that's awesome why did you guys decide if you're in new york i don't know if it's full time but i know you're there a lot why did you come out here i'm here for the last 20 years yes yeah, so um i wanted to have that experience i've recorded with depeche a lot of records in santa barbara um because that's where martin uh, uh chooses to live um, so we spend our time between New York and there, really. But, um, you know, it's a downtown studio. It's, you know, you know, no windows, you know, kind of whatever. Like, But this place is set up like on a hill in Malibu. You know, it's like overlooking the ocean. And really, at first, when you get there, it's a bit overwhelming because it's such an amazing place. Idyllic. You know, you could live there, you know. Um, it's set up like that. And you know what? Um, half of the guys, half of the band did. There's, ha there's little houses on, on the land and uh, um, on the complex, and you just stay there. Um, I live down the road um, in a hotel on Carbon Beach, in a little hotel there, which was great. And I would drive up the coast every day, just kind of pinching myself, going oh. like, <laughs> what, you know, how did I get to do this? You know, and, and there was something about, as well, the music, the way we work together um and some of the original musicians i don't know just neil young for instance you know um 
I imagined them taking the same same journey on that PCH, like and uh, you know in, back there, um, and a lot of the other musicians as well. You know, you got Cat Power and um, Lanigan himself. You know, like yeah. um, but there, there's something about that coastline uh, that's very magical. And the place definitely was. Once I walked in there, I knew that we had made the right choice because we did have a number of choices we could have gone. And, and, and Rick, Rick Rubin was just happened to be for those the month of, of November going to take some time off. So we had the whole place to ourselves. Oh, that's great, man. Obviously, the songs take you back to a place, as you mentioned, the bands, the artists as well. Did you get that feeling when you were recording that took you back to some sort of place, whether it's early in your career, mid career, that it's like, wow, something's going on inside me right now. This is really, really exciting. Yeah, I mean, and that, it, it, it did. It was like that. And, you know, making a record can be, you know, it's sometimes, you know, you've got to build slowly, you, you know, this depend. you know. Um, they're, they're all different, you know, and a lot does depend on your... Where, where your head's at in any particular time. I was really ready to do this. And I felt, um, for some reason, I felt that the songs were kind of telling me more about where I was in my life today mm. than things that I was kind of writing myself. Um, so that's how it really sort of came together. Um, Rich and I started talking about it probably early 2019. And wouldn't it be great if we could get everybody in the same room with these 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 musicians that majority of them I'd I'd performed on stages with, and um, this is what it turned into. It turned into imposter. As you mentioned, the world just went to hell after you recorded this album. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you itching to get back on stage, yeah. or are you feeling kind of comfortable at home right now? A bit of both, honestly. Um, but um, I am now because I'm singing and. Uh, Talking about this and um, sort of getting myself ready, I'm, I'm going off to London in about a month where we're kind of getting together for a couple of weeks for some rehearsals and um, all, all, all exactly the same music, musicians that played on this record. And we're getting ready to do some, I, I, what I would call showcase performances of this album. So we mm -hmm. want to play this album in its entirety. Yeah, and wow. then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, from start to finish. So it takes you on a, a little trip. I would never say this about a concert, but I think there should be a dress code required for these shows. Like I oh, want to go, is. I want to go in a suit. <laughs> I want uh, some safe candles out. Um, <laughs> I want like a Roy Rogers or Shirley Temple, but in a really, really <laughs> great glass. Like yeah. I feel the whole vibe. You know, that we've even talked about doing that on our son of makeshift stage that we want to set it up with all this kind of, maybe possibly on the right side of the stage, the opposite side to wherever the monitor tech is. Uh, uh, some kind of little cheesy bar or something. <laughs> maybe, with a, maybe with a mirror ball above it or something. So that in between certain, and you know, we've actually talked about this because then in between certain songs yeah. um, where some of the musicians will be, then they're not playing on that, partic uh, that particular moment. They can go <laughs> off and sit in the bar and, and have a couple of drinks and a, and, and a cigarette or something. I don't know. That's a really, that's a great idea. November 12th is when Imposter is out and we can hear the entire collection of songs. Press play on track number one, go through all of them. Um, please, please, yeah. Do you still get uh, nervous butterflies before you're putting something out to the world that you've been working on? Oh yeah, I Did mean, look, I, wow. there was, I got really comfortable actually with Imposter being just like ours. And, 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 you know, I, I played it to a few friends and stuff and, yeah. um, you know, but I, it started getting to the point where I thought, is this, is this record ever going to, is it ever going to come out? Is this going to be, the, the, is this going to be like my kind of uh, hidden record or something? I just, you know, but, you know, I am, I am happy that it's coming out uh, now. And, um, you know, I, uh, I'm I'm very proud of the record. You know, I just it feels right now. Look, it was supposed to come out uh, in the spring of 2020, and I think now is kind of like a better time for it in a way. Um, you know, I've had to wait and sit on it, and there's something about that's made it more special in a way. Yeah. And I had a chance to really live with it myself. 
And now it's going to be out there. We can all get it. And as I mentioned, and you said, yes, yes, yes. Let's start on track one and go through all 12. It's a really, really good listen. I appreciate you sending me the record early. I've absolutely loved it so much. I had my wife in here last night and we just played it and listened to it. And we were talking oh, about you all, all really, really good things. I know you've been busy, super busy doing press and getting this, the final touches. Have you watched that show squid game yet? Cause you said you watched Seinfeld. I'm watching it. Oh, I'm you are watching it right now. Yeah. I'm watching it right now. I'm up to about, um, episode six. I saw sort of binged watch a bit of it. It's my daughter. Actually, my daughter, I have to be honest, she, and her boyfriend, Miles, um, he he watches a lot of this kind of stuff. And, you know, she, she turned me on to it. Um, I'm actually out east at the moment. I'm out on Montauk uh, uh, on my own at the moment. Um, my wife was here and she didn't, my wife didn't really care for it. And she, I, I don't know, she was not really interested, I don't think, but I got into it. I kind of find it really... Uh, there's something about it that's like, you know, really telling to how we are as humans. You know, it's like this, you know, if it really came down to it, who's going to be the last man standing or woman right. standing? And what are, you gonna, what are you going to put yourself through or do to somebody else if you want to be that last person standing? Yeah, it does beg that question, doesn't it? So, you know, um, it was some interest. I'm up to the point where the two girls, um, you know, I thought it was really interesting there. You know, they one of them's got, they play the marbles game. You know, oh, they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no I, I, I won't spoil it, but like, that was, that was heavy. I got tears, tears in my eyes when that happened. Oh, I know, right? It's, it's crazy. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dave, uh, I'm never going to speak for an entire city, but I am now. Los Angeles, as you know, loves you. You are one of, if not the most important artist to us over all these years. I know it's not your home, but we are so happy for everything that you have done creatively. And of course, getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Pesh Mode. I don't know if you care about that, but I, all of us certainly do. I still find it quite amusing, but yes, we're flattered, of course. But Awesome, <laughs> awesome, man. All right, I'll leave it right there. Thank yeah, you, man. this is like unbelievable. I'm so, my heart is racing right now. Oh, with the Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Good luck. And I can't wait to see you guys play all these songs live. All right, man. You take care. Okay. You too. Thank you again. Hope you enjoyed. Now hit that subscribe button. And for more Tuna on Toast, listen wherever you get your podcasts.